87. 87% of employees worldwide are not engaged on the job. That number is terrible and we need to change it. That Gallup research tells us that for every team of 10 people, nine people aren't digging it. I was once a big contributor to those dark side stats. I had this job, it was like that movie Up in the Air, have you seen it? It's where George Clooney drives around or flies around city to city firing people for a living. And for those of you who haven't, it's so easy to catch you up because the story is that he flies to Detroit and he fires people. And then he flies to St. Louis and he fires people. And then he flies to Vegas and he fires people. Well, I once had that job. I was that guy. That's not what I wanted it to be, but that's how it turned out. I spent the first month driving around city to city, firing people I didn't know, using someone else's approach, an approach that put me squarely in my weaknesses, because that's what I thought I needed to be, to be a good manager. Then I got to see I was affecting other people in my life. I go to my local office and I'm greeted by this woman. She's a sweet and kind-hearted person on the team. We'll, we'll call her Mary for today. She greets me at the front door looking like a librarian who went to bodyguard class. I thought she was going to tackle me. She's very wound up that day. No, 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 no. We don't want you in this office wearing that jacket. You should turn around if you want to wear that firing jacket today. Mm. So I realized I had a designated firing jacket. It was in that moment when she kicked me in the butt with that comment that I knew I needed to drop that approach of focusing on what was broken with people, and that's when everything changed. That's when I decided and committed to notice what works, to focus on strengths. And that's the lesson you get to take away today for your career. You'll get three strategies for creating the own, your own lines in your career. Three strategies for changing the experience of your career by stepping into your strengths. So your first one. First strategy is to find your wrong-handed moments. So everyone, take your non-dominant throwing arm, hold it up, and imagine you have a softball in it. Now, throw that ball toward the wall in front of you. Does that feel a little bit awkward? I still see some awkward faces. I see those concentration tongues, like. Well, that's exactly what it feels like at work. So it feels awkward at first when you're working in your weaknesses, but then you practice enough and you start to become competent in them. And the risk here is that working in your weaknesses weakens your performance. The other risk is that, imagine, you could be creating a personal brand doing something you don't even like. So what do you do about it? You watch yourself for a few weeks, at home, at work, at school, wherever you are, and start watching for things that put you in a funk. Watch for where you're slow, watch for where you procrastinate, and watch for things that drain you. So noticing things that are slow. For example, you might make pivot tables and excel, and even though you've done it for the 50th time, it just feels not intuitive. Notice things you procrastinate. Maybe you have to call back a client, but every time you have to do that, you put it off until the last minute. And then notice things that drain you. So maybe you have to present the executive team PowerPoint every month, and when you do, you're yearning to do the analytics and find the story behind the numbers. But what you're doing instead is presenting and the delivery sucks the life out of you. So notice those things and then do less of them. You can either get rid of those tasks or work around them. So you can get rid of them by swapping out with a teammate. You can get rid of them by yeah, talking to your boss about doing that activity less, changing the responsibility over time. And don't write that one off, because you can do that a lot more than you would think it's possible. And don't worry, if you can't get rid of it entirely, you can work around it. Work around it by partnering with somebody who has that as their genius and their interest, 
or by taking that same goal and then just approaching it a little differently, not changing what your outcome is, but changing how you go about it by leading through your strength instead. So to do that part, you need to identify your strong-handed moments. That's your second strategy. So you have your wrong-handed, now you need your strong-handed. This sounds great, right? Find what you're good at and do more of it for your career. These are the lines in your career you want to create more of because working in your strengths will make you a stronger performer. And it sounds like common sense, but it's not common practice. It's so rare to find people who are intentionally doing this throughout their careers. So how do you do this one? Well, you look for those moments when you're just really in your flow, really in your groove. And when you're in your moment, then stop and think about the who, the where, and the how. So for the who, who are you with when you're at your best? Who are you best at collaborating with? Who do you feel enlivened by? Spend more time with those people. And then where? Notice where you are when you're really hitting your stride. Are you at home, at work, indoors, outdoors? What's the country culture? What's the company culture where you are? Notice that and spend more time there. And then how, this one is big. When you're in your moment, when you're keeping it 100, that's, <laughs> that's when you notice how you're approaching things. How are you thinking? How are you deciding? How are you relating to people? How are you interacting? Notice that so you can do that more often. When you find those talents, you'll notice everybody's are different. So you might notice that it's outdoors alone in nature that makes you at your best. You might notice it's the hustle bustle of cities, lots of things going on, lots of people, lots of horns honking, lots of action. And you might say, well, I don't even like people that much. I just want to be alone with the data. And that's the beauty of it. It's different for every person. So find your thing so you can do more of that. And once you find those natural talents, Invest in them so you can share them with the world. And that leads to your third strategy, which is to impact the world through your strengths. So just knowing your wrong-handed moments and knowing your strong-handed moments, it's not quite enough because without your action, they're just sitting there dormant without you. So you have to take action to let the world see your strengths. This is where it gets scary. This is where people get stuck. I got stuck when I was in that firing jacket job. I thought, I need to quit. It's using my weaknesses, I'm not digging it. And then I started having conversations with myself, thinking, I don't wanna fail this team. They're just learning how to trust again. No recruiter wants to see a job hopper, <laughs> job hopper resume, so that didn't sound good. I don't wanna fail my husband and be a crappy financial partner, so it just, didn't feel like movement was good, I convinced myself I was stuck. But convincing yourself you're stuck isn't a career solution. It's a stalling tactic. <laughs> if you wanna change the experience of your career, you don't have to quit, you have to act. So a few practical ways you can do this one step at a time. Think about your own work. Where are you wearing some armor like that? Where have you protected yourself against your weakness zone? Where could you shed that armor and be more of you? I know when I did that, my life got a lot better. Dozens of people on my team, their lives got better. And I know their families' lives got better too because they didn't come home grumpy every night because they hated their lives. Next, how about the character you're playing because that's who you think you needed to become to play that role. That's how it's always been done before you. Think about those situations at work and how could you change them so that you can be fully you, so that you can bring your A game to work every day. I know when I started doing that, I didn't have to go home and binge watch stand-up comedy to laugh away my heart palpitations every night. <laughs> and the last one, just getting really simple with tasks and responsibilities. What are you doing today that drains you that you could do a different way. You could reframe it. Come at it through a new angle. Now that you know how you approach things at your best, keep the goal the same and come at it through your strengths instead. That's how you change the experience of your career and impact the world through your strengths one step at a time, one moment at a time. So let's take the first action today 
get a little bit of momentum right here, right now. Take out a piece of paper and on it write one strength, one positive attribute you bring to the workplace. One thing you could share with the world to make it a better place. Everybody stand up. Now, share your strength with the world. As you leave here today, live through this strength. Lead through this strength in your actions, in your relationships, in your conversations. And when you do, you will begin to change the experience of your career. And you will have taken the first big step into your unique strengths. Thank you. Woo!